It's very possible that had P. Diddy immediately caught and killed. Just when you thought the Diddy drama couldn't get any wilder, Cat Williams has entered the chat, and y'all, this dude is spilling some major tea. The legendary comedian just reacted to Diddy's 113 charges, and let's just say he's not holding anything back. From Hollywood secrets to insider knowledge, Cat is exposing it all, and he's got some serious dirt on Diddy that nobody saw coming. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party. And then it's a separate party in the little room. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited in a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn room and you fuck around and look in the raw room and shit. <laughs> Nick, come here. Come here. Is that two niggas kissing? I'm going to tell you the craziest thing about Diddy being locked up right now facing mandatory minimums, the possibility of life in federal prison. Go read the transcript from the bond hearing and listen to what the defense says they believe is the start of the feds looking into P. Diddy. See, the defense says, my read of it, many months ago, a woman approaches Diddy and says, hey, this is through lawyers. We're going to be releasing a tell-all book about this woman's experience with Diddy over all the years. And it's going to make you look like a monster. And if you don't want that book to get out there, you can buy the exclusive rights to it for $30 million. Catch and kill this book. Diddy's team says no. Woman comes back with a lawyer. We're going to file a civil lawsuit against you because it's not just stuff that makes for good print. These are civil claims that we can bring and we can win millions of dollars. Diddy's team says, okay bring the lawsuit. They bring the lawsuit and within like hours it's settled for surprise surprise 30 million dollars. After those things happened a line of people came with stories to get their check too. Hey if she got 30 mil what can I get off this guy? I was there I saw this I heard that and that then led to a federal investigation. See people think oh somebody's out to get him he pissed off the wrong person it's the alcohol company that nah you guys got to understand that there's prosecutors out there who want big sexy cases. They don't fall out out of the sky every day the chance to go after somebody like p diddy and put him away for life is like the greatest case you could ever find if you're a prosecutor and so when a public filing gets released and you read it and you go wait a second that law firm is mad thorough wait a second he settled it for 30 million wait a second if all of this is true then i could probably get some subpoenas i could probably collect some evidence i could probably build a case they start doing it they raid a couple months later they indict it is very possible that had p diddy he immediately caught and killed the story by paying the $30 million that he paid eventually anyway. That story never gets public, nobody ever comes forward, and nobody in the federal government ever bothers to look for the baby oil. All right, let's be real. Cat Williams has never been one to shy away from putting folks on blast. He's taken shots at everyone from Kevin Hart to other big names in the industry, and now his sights are set on Diddy. In a recent stand-up performance, Cat couldn't resist addressing the massive elephant in the room, Diddy's 113 charges. And let me tell you, this man did not hold back. Fox News alert, the judge denied Diddy's appeal to get out on bail after the music mogul and Democrat community organizer was charged with sex trafficking and racketeering for forcing women into freak off sex parties with male prostitutes that he recorded and keeping them quiet through violence and blackmail. The feds say the investigation's still ongoing and Diddy's a flight risk who's tampered with witnesses before and could do it again if he's free. Diddy offered $50 million and promised not to have any women over his house if they let him out, but the judge didn't budge. So Diddy's spending his days in Brooklyn's Metropolitan Detention Center, New York's most notorious jail. It's known for its barbaric conditions, stabbings, murders, suicides, blackouts, and lockdowns. For dinner, Diddy can eat turkey with boiled potatoes and beets. Sources tell TMZ Diddy's being isolated from General Pop because some inmates may be see taking him out as a badge of honor. He'll get one hour of rec time a day and three showers a week and has to wake up at 6 a.m. to make his bed in off his cell floor. A few celebrities have spent time here, R. Kelly, Ghislaine Maxwell, and our good friend Minnie Madoff. Diddy's lawyer says they're going to fight until the end, but the government's case looks rock solid. The prosecution has a mountain of evidence against them that they have from basically 300 grand jury subpoenas. The feds have materials from banks, tech companies, airlines, hotels, escort services, even Diddy's wealth management firm. They also have the testimony from dozens of witnesses and victims and evidence from Diddy's own electronic 
electronic devices. The prosecution says they corroborated testimony about Diddy's freak-offs using travel records, payment records, and the videos. Diddy's alleged crimes go back years. In 2011, he kidnapped somebody at knife point and gunpoint so that he could break into a different person's house. Two weeks later, someone in Diddy's crew found the victim's car, sliced open the convertible top, then dropped in a Molotov cocktail. Diddy's been running wild for at least 15 years, but he might not be able to slip out of this one. And he's only the first domino to fall. If he gets right there in the sex trafficking for uh, freak offs, it will be others involved. Yes. Like if you ever ran a train with Diddy, you're probably going to jail. Yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying that, you know, that's possibly on those cameras because he had cameras in the crib. Man. So people are thinking that maybe that there'll be other people involved. If you ever been on butt naked, if you ever been butt naked anywhere with Diddy or half half butt naked with Diddy and there was some women around, awesome men around, that he told you were part of the party party, you're probably going to jail. Yeah. Immediately after Diddy was charged, we started seeing record executives resign and retire. We're not saying it's all connected, but the timing's interesting. Stacey Richmond's a music industry attorney. Do you think it's a coincidence that some of these record label executives started retiring? I don't know that it's a coincidence. I think that the evidence will reveal people who have concerns. So we don't really have those answers yet. Clearly, it may be an indication of concern. It may be just time to move on to greener pastures. Will Diddy rat people out? That is a personal decision for any individual. And the question of ratting out, I think in the government's eye, he's the top of the iceberg. Now, the next question is, what does he know about others who may have participated with him? Like the gentleman just said a few minutes ago, what's on those videos? So if he spills the beans and says, this record label executive financed these parties, this guy did this, this guy did that, would that maybe reduce the time he spends in prison? It's a conceptual, it's a conceptual possibility. What you're talking about is something known as a 5k1 that would mean that he was cooperating the government valued that cooperation and they issued a letter which would be a signal to the judge all right let's break it down diddy's facing some serious heat with these 113 charges and no i'm not about to list all of them i've got snacks waiting but the accusations they're wild ranging from human trafficking to sexual misconduct and the list keeps growing the fbi is digging deep and everything is finally coming to light. Cat Williams even joked that Diddy probably never thought this day would come, thinking his money would protect him. Now look at him, fighting for his life. And honestly, Cat's not wrong. Um, uh, conduct um, carries some significant penalties and, uh, and, and we are gratified that we were able to bring that charge. One more I'm not gonna be able to get into that, but but you can look it up and and, and yes, sex trafficking, especially when it involves coercion or force, um, is, is a very serious crime and it carries significant penalties. Good so afternoon, much. Darla Miles, ABC7 New York. Thank you for this press conference and for the details. Two questions. Um, in context of this indictment and the information that was presented to the grand jury, are you able to clarify the number of victims it's mentioned plural in the indictment, but can you specify the number of victims just for this particular indictment? And secondly, can you provide details about the alleged arson? Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to provide either. Um, the number of victims, um, you are correct. They, we are intentional in saying multiple. The details of the arson incident um, are limited to what we have in the indictment and also the detention letter that we filed, which contains more details than the indictment does at various points, um, but we don't have anything more beyond that. Next question. Lynn Tran, CNN. Um, are any of his accomplices or uh, associates under investigation? And additionally, could he face any more charges? So the investigation is ongoing. That means both as to him and to anyone else who we believe uh, committed the crime uh, with him. Julia Papa. Uh, good morning, Clinton Edwards. Uh, any indication that some of the women or victims here were imprisoned in his residences? And did he have locations where he kept them? And did they were not allowed to leave? And uh, also, uh, he's indicted here, although there were searches and raids in L.A., Miami. Why in New York? Well, um, I'm, I'm biased. I'm the U.S. Attorney in the Southern District of New York. I think that we um, have an outstanding track record of bringing some of the most impactful, sprawling, complex, difficult um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking, labor trafficking, you name it, the Southern District of New York can do it. And so we're very proud of that. And so the scope and complexity of this investigation isn't something that we ran from, it's something that we embrace and we will continue to do that. Um, as to your question about whether he imprisoned anyone, um, all I can say is that, you know, I mentioned this March 2016 incident where something was caught on video where a victim was attempting to flee um, and there was violence that was associated with it. Um, that was at a hotel. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. 
Thanks a lot. Does your office intend to, to seek remand or are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY in terms of the elements? Thanks. So um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning and it contains uh, the law as well. There is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. John Anise, New York Daily News. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, uh, the, the uh, guns, the, the cases of lubricant and the videos. Where were they found amongst the residents? Were they all scattered around the houses in one place? I kind of wanted to just get a better picture of, um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details uh, that you're seeking are in the detention letter. So for instance, some of the, the, the AR-15s, two of the three, the face AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, broken down into parts along with magazines with ammunition uh, loaded in them. So some of the some of that detail is in the detention letter. Beyond that, I'm not going to be able to get into uh, where other items were were stored. Ben Kochman, Post. Hey, thanks for uh, doing this. Your office um, was the office that uh, had been prosecuting uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, before he uh, died uh, in custody. I I have not read your detention memo yet. It's the first thing I'm going to do uh, after this ends. But does it does the does the memo address or is your office concerned with uh, with Combs's safety in custody given? Um, given what happened with Epstein. So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. It's part of the criminal justice system. So, but I do not draw any sort of connection between Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and what may or may not happen. But listen, this isn't just about a handful of charges. This is 113 separate accusations that have shaken the music industry and beyond. And no, not in a playful way. Cat Williams' reaction shows just how deep these allegations go and how much people in the industry likely knew about for years. The real kicker? No one said a thing. Guys don't put those pills that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. Most of those girls, especially if they like mixed drinks, you understand, they see the bottles when they open them and they try to keep their eyes on because they don't want to get no kind of drugs put in their system. But what they don't understand is in the orange juice and it's in the cranberry juice. They didn't put the pills and the stuff in there, the roofies, the ecstasy, the ease, all, whatever they, they put it in the juice. Now, those girls who like the mixed drinks, you understand what I'm saying? They're gonna pour their own sexual act because they don't understand it ain't in the bottles, it's in the juice. Those guys, they learn that and they put it to those girls who don't know no. Now, here's where Kat really shook things up. During his set, he made some serious claims that got everyone buzzing. He hinted that Diddy isn't the only one who should be sweating. According to Kat, a lot of big names are probably nervous right now because they were all part of Diddy's infamous parties. And by infamous, he means real messy situations. Kat even joked that some folks are probably hiding under their beds, praying the FBI doesn't come knocking next. You know that old saying, right? Guilty by association. Nasty. also threw some serious shade at the celebrities pretending like they don't know what's going on. He said, y'all were at those parties, now y'all acting brand new. He didn't drop any names, but the message was crystal clear. Hollywood has been turning a blind eye for far too long, and now it's all catching up to them. Okay, some, some very important instructions, okay? I go by the name of love. We all here in love's 4th of July. 
Oh, at my parties, we dance. Like, guys dance with girls, and girls dance with guys, and guys dance with guys, and girls dance with girls. But you gotta dance, though, okay? That's the shit. So, as I, I can't even understand if you're not dancing when this shit drops. Drop that. Yeah. <laughs> 